Hello and the awesome tutor. Today we're going to be looking at cubic graphs from C1. So, a basic cubic graph looks like this. Y is equal to x cubed. So it starts at the bottom and then it goes up. But y is negative x cubed. If the x cubed term is negative, it starts up and then it goes down. So the graph is flipped. You need to be able to sketch graphs in the form y is ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. So here is an example. We know that the x cubed term is positive, so it's going to start down and go up. The y-intercept is 6, because that's the constant. And so, to find where it crosses the x-axis, you have to factorize it. Okay? And this gives you the solutions. x is negative 1, x is 3, and x is 2. The graph will look like this. Okay, so there's your y-intercept, not the maximum point, the y-intercept. And these are your x-solutions. So because it, the x cubed term is positive, the graph starts from the bottom. And then it goes through the first x solution, and then it turns, goes through the second x solution, turns again, goes through the third x solution. That's how it works. But there are some exceptions. This is an example of an exception. We know the x cubed term is positive, so it's going to start from the bottom. The y-intercept is negative 1. But if you factorize it, you get x plus 1 as a factor twice, which can be written as y is x plus 1 all squared multiplied by x minus 1. So your solutions are x is 1 and x is negative 1 twice. So essentially you only have two solutions, x is negative 1 and x is 1. That will make the graph look like this. So because x plus 1 is a factor twice, so the x is negative 1 is a solution twice, the graph, instead of going through x is negative 1, it's going to touch it. And then it's going to go down and turn to go through the other x solution. So if x negative 1 was all squared instead of x plus 1, it would go through x is negative 1, but then it would touch x is 1 and go up. So whenever you have a solution that is twice, like x is negative 1 here, the graph is just going to touch it in turn, not go through it. Now it's your turn. Try sketching this graph and then I'll go through it. So pause the video and sketch the graph. Okay, so we know the x cubed term is positive, so it's going to start from the bottom. You know, the y-intercept is 0, because there is no constants, the constant is 0. If we factorize it, we get the solutions x is 0, x is 3, and x is negative 1. So the graph is going to look like this. It starts from the bottom, because x cubed is positive, and it goes through your x solutions, turns, goes through the x solution, turns, and goes through the x solution. Alright? Now try sketching this graph. Pause the video and have a go. Okay, so the x cubed term is negative in this one. The y-intercept is 0. And this is what you're trying to solve for the x values. Now, if I was solving this, I would times everything by negative 1 to make the x cubed term positive, because then it's easier to factorize. And then you have the same factors as the previous question, and therefore the same solutions as the previous question. The only difference is... It starts from the top and ends at the bottom. Okay, so the graphs have been flipped in the x-axis. So the y values have been flipped, because essentially what we did, let's say this is f of x, this will be negative f of x. We just stuck a big negative sign in front of everything. That will flip the y values. So the graph flips, on the x-axis. If we made all the x values negative, so f of x, we, trans we transform the graph into f minus x, then the graph will flip on the y-axis. So the x values flip, the x solutions flip. 
And I'm not going to go too much into transformations because that's for another video. Now also in your exam you might be asked to find the minimum and maximum points. So you just differentiate and you put it equal to zero. Because at these turning points the gradient is zero. Okay? The gradient decreases and then it gets to zero. And then it changes sign. Alright? Goes from positive and negative. And in between that the gradient is zero. Alright, but that's for another video. Anyway, this has been the Awesome Tutor. Bye.